First was going to do the research product to see if fluoridating water had any effect on the brain's function. She thought it would be negative. She didn't think fluoride would have any uh, adverse effects on the brain. She uh, did one of the largest studies that's been done uh, in animals to see the effect of fluoridating water on their brain function. And she used a very innovative modern technique. And in this technique, she used computers to see the behavior of the animal so that it was totally objective. There was no subjective influence by the researcher themselves. That had never been done before, and all this was high-tech equipment. Uh, she completed her study, and to her surprise, the fluoride produced two main effects. If you fed the fluoride to a pregnant animal, the offspring then became hyperactive, in other words, like ADHD. If you gave the fluoride uh, after birth, the animal became very lethargic, sort of like a couch potato, didn't really want to do anything, became very apathetic acting. Uh, so this was a very clear effect with objective computerized evaluation of the behavior of these animals. She used over 500 animals. Uh, she completed this research and she also measured the fluoride levels in the animal's brain and found some very interesting thing is that fluoride tends to accumulate in the part of the brain that controls behavior, particularly the, the uh, hippocampus and the other limbic areas of the brain. She brought this uh, <clears throat> research to the National Institutes of Health. <clears throat> they asked her to present this and the results of her research. Well, at the same time, after she wrote up her research, she had presented it one of the very prestigious journals to be published, and uh, they didn't know it. So she presented it to the National Institute of Health, and their response was very cold. And she said when she was walking through the National Institutes of Health, all the walls were adorned with big posters uh, uh, proclaiming the effectiveness of fluoridation of water and promoting the fluoridation of water. And she said, this isn't a very objective audience I'm speaking to. Uh, well, they were very hostile and very cold to her during her uh, presentation and didn't even ask questions. Uh, so when she got back to her institute, uh, they asked her uh, about sending this to a journal to be published. And they wanted the name of the journal. Well, she wouldn't tell them because she knew they would try to stop the publication try to influence the journal not to publish it. So she wouldn't tell them, and it was published, uh, much to their uh, dismay and anger, and uh, a wide audience uh, of scientists began to look at this research, for, which for the first time proved that fluoride added to water in the concentrations that humans are exposed to was producing profound, profound changes in the brain and altering behavior uh, of young animals exposed to it. We have to realize at the time, women were adding uh, fluoridated water to reconstitute the baby food. Well, over half of babies get reconstituted baby food. They're not breastfed. Uh, so this was tens of millions of babies were being exposed to concentrations of fluoride that were used uh, in this experiment. Where she, uh, after they found that this had been published, uh, they fired her. And the Forsyth Dental uh, Research Institute, in fact, about that time, had gotten a quarter million dollar grant from the Colgate Company, which fluoridates their toothpaste. So she was fired from her job. She's never gotten another federal grant. And she was one of the top neurotoxicologists in the world. She had created this innovative new system well, she went back to her lab to get the rat's brains so that she could continue research on her own. It turns out they had uh, flooded the, the lab, uh, claimed there was a break in a water pipe. It destroyed her computer system, and they killed all the rats and incinerated them. So there was no tissue left to do any studies on. Uh, all of these things look rather suspicious, so, you know, you have to come to your own conclusion, uh, what does this mean? Number one, we know that there's a numerous health effects of adding fluoride to water. We know fluoride bioaccumulates in the human body. That means it just keeps getting higher and higher concentrations the more you drink water. 
if you want to produce the highest concentration of a mineral, you don't put it in the food, you put it in the water because people drink a lot of water, particularly in warmer climates. So that produces the highest level of bioaccumulation. And that's what we were saying. Well, Dr. Yamanyanis did some studies and looked at the different tissues in the body, found out the highest accumulation was in the thyroid gland. It had been known that one way to reduce thyroid function was to put fluoride in the water, that it produced a significant hypothyroidism or low function of the thyroid gland. Now, not only does that uh, produce lethargy, apathy, uh, weakness, tiredness in adults, but if you do it in pregnant women, the babies are born with low IQs and they never recover. So even mild reduction of thyroid function in pregnant women has now been shown to produce significant neurobehavioral problems in their offspring. So we've got some rather profound problems with fluoridation that are now well documented uh, uh, from laboratories all over the world uh, without any question. For instance, one of them Dr. Varner did uh, out of Europe in which he looked at 0.5 parts per million, which is half of what's put in water, and found significant death of neurons in the brain and damage to the blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. Uh, he's a highly regarded researcher. It was published uh, in a very prestigious uh, neurological journal. Uh, so we have all of these studies proving that this is a very hazardous thing to do, that it produces behavioral changes, uh, many of which we're seeing in, in the populations that are drinking fluoridated water. We know it bioaccumulates, it gets worse over time. We know that it's absorbed into the plants and the foods and the concentration in the foods uh, is rising significantly. Yet, we have a government that is still pushing as hard as they can, using taxpayer money, to get all the water supply in the United States fluoridated. Uh, so I, I leave it uh, to the audience to th think for themselves, what could possibly be the justification for doing such a thing? If you've demonstrated it doesn't reach its objective, that is reducing cavities, which everybody now has admitted, even the ADA has had to admit it, why is it still being added to the water? If it has these profound health effects, why is it still being added to the water? And even the ADA had to admit recently that it is harmful to the baby's brain, and they put out a warning. Now, this is just on the government sites and on their own site. Women should not reconstitute their baby food with tap water that's fluoridated. Well, you don't see that as a headline in your newspaper. You don't see it on most uh, major news uh, TV stories, which would reach most women. It's just sort of kept under the cover so they can say, well, we did put out the warning. We just didn't make it a widespread warning. So a lot of women are still reconstituting their baby's infant formula with fluoridated tap water that even the ADA now admits is harmful to their brains. So if we start looking at some of the other things that are being done in this society, for instance, the use of aspartame, widespread use of aspartame, which is also proven to be a brain toxin without any question. It's also linked to an increased incidence of cancer. Uh, uh, to any reasonable objective mind, these studies prove it. When we look at the effects of MSG, monosodium glutamate, and other food additives that are excitotoxins on brain and behavior, uh, when we look at the effects on reproduction of these things, for instance, fluoride reduces reproduction. It influences sperm mobility, sperm production, and uh, testosterone level in males. And it bioaccumulates in these organs and gradually reduces uh, the ability uh, to, to reproduce. Uh, when we look at uh, aluminum, lead, all of these things that are ending up in our water system, our food that are being given uh, as food additives, we're seeing some common effects. They have behavioral effects, they have reproductive effects, and they have effects on health like cancer, degenerative brain disorders. And it's well demonstrated in the scientific literature. The question you have is why are the regulatory agencies not are approaching this? Why are they still allowing this? When there's compelling evidence that it's harmful. 
just to be on the safe side, you would think, uh, when millions of people are exposed to this every day, they would uh, at least warn the public that it has effects on your reproduction, has effects on your risk of cancer, has effects on your brain function, your cognitive function, your memory, learning. It has effects on the development of the brain of the child. When all these things are known and in the scientific literature and peer-reviewed journals, why is the public being kept in the dark? And so, you know, just answer that question yourself without saying, well, they're doing it on purpose, you have to say, well, either they're doing it on purpose or they're the most incredibly stupid and confident people in the world and they don't deserve to be in positions of power and should be removed from positions of power and people with good cognitive sense replace them. There's the only two choices you have uh, in this debate. Either they're incredibly stupid and incompetent or criminal or they're doing it on purpose for a reason, which goes back to the Rockefeller design of human engineering. When we look at vaccinations, this country vaccinates children at a rate higher than anywhere in the entire world. They get uh, something like 46 different antigen exposures before they start school. They're getting uh, 26 to 30 by age one. Now, I've made the, the case in a number of articles I've published uh, in peer-reviewed journal that this is very harmful to the brain. I've outlined the mechanism by which it does it. And yet the policy continues and every day we see the federal government pushing more vaccinations in collusion with the pharmaceutical companies that are making high profits off of it. International organizations are pushing it. And you have to ask why. Now, there's a recent study that's been done uh, by Neil Miller. Uh, and in this study, he compared the mortality of infants uh, age one uh, and uh, children five years and younger in relationship to the number of vaccines they, they receive. It is a direct dose response in every country examined. For instance, the United States has the highest vaccination rate in the world, and it is 44th in the world in infant uh, uh, health. In other words, we have uh, infant mortality that's 44th in the world. Now, for a nation that's supposed to be the leader of health care, why are we so far down the list of infant mortality in terms of high levels of infant mortality? and it directly correlates the number of vaccines. And if you follow the number of vaccines, it's a straight line, which shows a dose response of this toxicity of the vaccines. And it makes sense because when you over-vaccinate, it interferes with the development of the brain. And then the child has difficulty learning, they become behavioral problems, and their brain cannot develop normally. And this is happening on a very, very wide scale. Uh, we're talking about 90% of children in this country are getting this huge number of vaccinations. And despite the fact that we have this compelling evidence that it is harmful to the developing brain, we have healthcare officials who are totally ignoring this and continue to promote it. Uh, so we, we have to ask, where, where is this going to stop? How many more toxins are they going to add to the burden uh, to these people, which is going to shorten their lifespan, interfere with their 